Hey guys, it's Gamerco. Welcome to another Duelist video. This time it's going to be something rather different because we're not going up against a ladder opponent here. We are going up against a boss. So the newest patch has introduced instead of the daily challenge stuff, they are testing out uh, boss battles. So I guess this is kind of like the uh, adventure stuff in Hearthstone. I haven't actually played Hearthstone, so <laughs> as crazy as that sounds for somebody who kind of likes card game stuff, I don't really play very many of them. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of what this is. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what to expect from this, and I'm expecting to get trashed by this, but it's just become available. This is a little bit later than I normally like to record, so hopefully I'm not going to disturb things too much with that. But yeah, we're going to face the power of his unlimited arsenal. Uh, yeah, I don't know quite how I feel about that, but uh, I'll probably try a couple of different things. I'm gonna go with this deck first though, because I kind of like the, the one-man vaf type of thing. And well, we'll just have to see how it goes. So, the deck style that I have here, I guess I can play this early. Uh, Plasma Storm is probably a little bit too much. I mean, the idea with this is that my general is designed to be the dude that I attack with most of all. Like, other minions are nice, but for the most part, he's only got 20 health. Oh, but he does have Skywind Glaives to start with. Oh no, that's not it at all. That is not a Skywind Glaives. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, there are no mana tiles, I've noticed that as well. He starts with four mana, seriously? Okay. Um, that's quite a bit more than I was hoping for. And he has celerity on his first three actions. Hmm. Alright. Well. Let's just see what he does then. So, yeah, there's no mana tiles to accelerate into, which is quite scary. He's just gonna go ham here, right? I have no idea what sort of cards he's gonna play, but starting two mana ahead of you, that's gonna be rough. Also, that's rather loud, I apologize for that. Azure at Lion, so I guess the Lion are sort of start, that's reasonable. Um, so how t I mean, I can clear the lion if I play Iridium Scale. I might just want to clear, like, it, it's fairly obvious this guy is going for a double action sort of build. Uh, I might just want to clear him, though. Uh, I'm gonna replace this just now. That's not what I want to be seeing right now. That's too expensive of a card. Uh, yeah, so I could clear the lion or I could clear his celerity. I think it's best that I clear the lion here. So, Iridium Scale gives me Frenzy, that means I can attack everything around me. So I get to hit him and I damage the lion. So that's going to take one more proc off of his celerity and if he wants to hit this now... Well... Oh! What? Okay, so that's a Vitruvian artifact, so he's going to get more power and he's got Entropic Decay. How did he play that with... Then how did he play that with only... Oh, did he automatically equip that? He automatically equipped that. That's scary. Um, well, <laughs> that wasn't what I was expecting. So, I could Earth Sphere and heal all the way back up here, or I could just go full face and go with the Adamantite Claws. I think going full face is probably the best bet here. Uh,. Yeah, because this gives me 6 attack, puts him down to 8, 
And I'm down at 13. You can hit me again. I'm down at 9. But I don't expect that there's any kill combos at that stage. That might. Oh, well, maybe if he does that, there will be. Alright, so he is backing off. That's good. Because I can use Entropic Gaze and stuff like that to buff up. Iron Cliff Guardian's not fun. <laughs> You're a very mean person, but you know what? I can deal with that though, because that's uh, one of the nice things about running this general is I actually have the firepower that I can deal with stuff like that. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to play the Drogon. Whenever I use my Bloodborne spell, which is plus one attack, this is a permanent thing until it gets dispelled. Uh, so we can do that. I can buff myself up and have a higher attack total. So now I'm just thinking, what can you kill me with from here? I'm not entirely sure. I'm hoping next turn I'm going to be able to play the... Oh, Regalia too. Uh, this is getting really, really scary now. Looks like he's deciding not to stay near me, but that's getting tough. Oh, and all of his artifacts get fully healed as well. Ugh. Alright. So that's kind of uncool. The nice thing is I can just try and use Entropic Gaze and burn him down. I think I need to use the Earth Sphere this turn. So it might be a case of Earth Sphere and maybe Natural Selection. I guess I could replace the Cryptographer here. Alright, get ourselves another body. Do I even want to play that though? Because that's just going to get destroyed instantly. Regalia stops the first two damage that he takes in a turn. So... Yeah, I think I do need to Earth Sphere here. So that gives me back up to a nice healthy total. You can back off because I need your double power later. Um, I don't want to stay in range of the guys. That is the problem. So maybe this turn I do just go ahead and Entropic Gaze. Okay. So at least these two I can probably clear. He switched one of his artifacts out. That's interesting. So what I'm looking for at the moment is Grove Lion as the main thing that I would like. If I can get hold of Grove Lion, then I can give my general force field, which would be really, really strong right now. Imara Healer is super annoying, because that's going to heal him back up. I don't really have Dispel in this deck, so that's kind of a problem, child. Because um, I can just kill it. But then it's going to do 10 damage to me. I need something else to handle that. Yeah, I might have been a little bit too passive with stuff here. Uh, just wondering if I can do anything about that now. Because I can trade this in and that way I only take 5. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the best bet. It is going to heal him up again, which is really obnoxious. Maybe that'll draw him into into the battlefield, though. That might actually be a good idea. Um, so then we have enough that I can... Oh, see, this thing doesn't die to Macantor, which is really annoying. Because Macantor only has four attacks. I think I just have to double natural selection here. And then I could flash uh, Reincarnation to get the other Drogon out. That doesn't seem like a smart idea. Because then it only has two health. So we switch to another Sunstone Bracer. That's fine. So that means next turn this should switch out, huh? Another Aymara, though. 
And the Silver Guard, okay. Not entirely sure how best to handle that. So, Earth Sphere seems fairly obvious here. I need to overload if I'm going to have myself. I would like... An Iridium Scale would be really good here. I don't think... No, I think I'm going to need the Drogon here later on. So we're going to replace that. Cryptographer... Hmm. Cryptographer lets me reuse my Bobborn spell, so I just keep getting more power, but... I don't think that's really the best play here. I think I do just... Well, I mean, I could play it and get another attack point. Obviously, this is the best kill target here. Because it's only got one health. If he gets close to it, then it has three attack. So... Yeah, maybe I just play the Earth Sphere. Play the Cryptographer out of range. And that gives me access to this again for a sixth attack. This is really weak to dispel, though. There's the Iridium Scale I wanted last turn. So now he's just got all Sunstone Braces on. So I was going to sacrifice that in. That's going to bring me back down to, 12, uh, to 10. War Talon, okay. That's got a lot of health, but I can handle that. It's not impossible for me to take it down. Um, I'm not going to be able to move in range. I think... If I summon Drogon here, obviously I can take this out. That's going to put me down a lot, though. I don't think I have much of a choice, unless I replace something into... Uh, Grove Lion. But then I can't play Drogon. I can still clear this, though. Uh, yeah, let's actually just replace the Drogon, then. Tectonic Spikes doesn't really help. That's just going to put me even lower down in health. Um, shoot, that is not good. Because if he gets a crazy thing next turn, then he pop, like, he might just beat me out, which is not fun. Uh, yeah, let's trade these two in. Because I don't really have a whole lot of choice there. Yeah, if he gets an artifact that's more than plus one attack, I think I just lose next turn. Which is kind of rude. Um, yeah, that's... That's a thing. There's the Grove Lion I wanted like five turns ago. Luckily he didn't. He just replaced into another Bracer. So he can't kill me this turn. Unless he's got some sort of rush in hand. He's just going to trade the Mechantle. That's fine. It's not really what I would have done, but whatever. Ruby Rifter, that's an interesting card. So when your general takes damage, this gets more powerful and it draws a card. Well, it's going to die at the same time here, so now we can finally start maybe getting some control back on this board. Because now I can play all 9 mana, I can actually get all of my stuff out. An 8 attack with Frenzy, so I can shift on in. I have force field so I don't take any damage from this. Chunk him for 8 damage. And the Grove Lion should be far enough out of the way that it won't actually get killed here. So that's going to force him back into the corner again by the looks of it. That's interesting. Sand Sister for more attack, and then the Mechanist, yeah, but that is poor positioning though, because if he'd have placed it here, it would have been uh, safe for me, but it wasn't, so just going in, smash everything, and take him out. Wow, that was, that was a bit tougher than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, not really, actually. I expected it to be pretty hard, but that was definitely more interesting than I expected. Um, there was only one Thing that was truly unique to the boss, if you will, but it was giving him celerity on an artifact. That was really interesting. Uh, I imagine if they made a card that did that for a faction, it would probably be 
busted as all hell unless it costs like six or seven mana. So that's that's totally what they're gonna give magma in the next uh, expansion, right? And for winning that, you get a spirit orb. Looks like it's just the spirit orb for the expansion, the uh, the Shimsar expansion, not the Rise of the Bloodborne. That's a separate thing. It's like a mini set, and you get a boss crate for 48 hours. Unfortunately, you've got to buy the key for this, and it's five dollars for that. But there's quite a bit of stuff in there, at least. Uh, the common crate key gives you access to a couple of it. Uh, what's it? Um, there's a there's a prismatic card in there, and there's some uh, random like uh, skin or legendary sort of. I don't think it's legendary specifically, but it's um, some sort of aesthetic thing. Uh, the gauntlet ticket's quite good. That's normally two dollars of price, and then the the orbs. It's two for three dollars, or you know, like it, it sort of works out, but you've still got to buy it, which is kind of annoying. So, yeah, that was the uh, <laughs> that was the first boss. That's uh, kind of interesting. You can see there's a time limit on the on the crate stuff, as we see. So, uh, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, let's see what we get in the pack just around this out because. Why not, eh? We earned a pack for doing that, we may as well see what was in the pack. And there's an epic card. Two rares and an epic is not too bad. Uh, Prismatic Slow is quite nice. Uh, that'll disenchant for a bit if I want. Uh, Blood Baron is kind of interesting. I don't really run the sort of deck that would play that. Mirror Meld would be cool, but I've already got a full playset of that. And our epic is... Terrible. Heck yeah. <laughs> if you could ever get enough really high quality uh, battle pets in your hand for this. So there is Vitruvian's Astral Flood could maybe do that, but then that's 8 mana to play one creature that can just get dispelled or hard removed, and it's not very good. But you know what, that's fine because it's Disenchant Father, I could do with that. All right. Hopefully that was interesting. I, I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, definitely looking forward to the other bosses. I think there's supposed to be one or two a week, so we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to be doing much video stuff in the next while because I'm actually taking a trip for the next three weeks, uh, starting Sunday. You know, next month basically I'll be out doing other stuff, so I might not actually get to do these ones for video stuff, but hey, they're kind of neat, so yeah, check it out if you have not uh, if you have not already played the game. So, it's been Game of Cow, showing off the new boss feature in Duelist, and until next time, take care.